how was meeting everybody? We got to we got to go to Boston. We took yeah, plane flights. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, right. Like um, so so many things you take for granted when right. We started the studio during COVID. Hadn't had the chance to you know meet everybody in person. We're hiring remote first, right? We just built a remote first studio. Just kind of that's just part of part of the company culture. Didn't, ha didn't really have the opportunity to show the game in person until quite recently, right? Like we, we could have we could have shown the game in person at Gamescom last year, but we weren't ready to do that. And so I think this, right, this PAX East was really the first big gaming conference that we were ready and you could do an in-person show, um, right? We'd, we'd applied for the, uh, the PAX Rising Showcase, which is the, the curated group of studios that they choose and they, right, they paid for our booth for us and they give you a really good spot on the show floor. So it was, it was a really good coming out party for us. It was super fun. Yeah. It, the, the interesting thing to me um, was getting a chance to spend time with, uh, with Nick and Scott. Um, and so for, for those who may or may not be aware, Nick is the writer on the project and Scott's the lead designer. Yeah. Um, and getting a chance to chat with people in person, again, we are talking about this sort of remote activity thing. You've seen nothing but how somebody writes, which yeah. is fine for Nick, you know, but it's kind of <laughs> nice to hear a voice. You put a face to a, to a name, uh, yeah. and just get a sense of how, how people are. It was definitely a chaotic thing. Um, a lot of learn as you go situations yeah. like we showed up at the at the show on on setup day quite early right mm -hmm. hardly any of the other indie devs were there if any we might have been the yeah. first one that was there yeah um you know sneaking in a, a a fancy um stand to put the tv on you know to get up to get that up at the corner of the booth and yeah. all that kind of good stuff um yeah yeah right we obviously we tried to do our homework uh right going to gamescom last year and then uh, prior to this, just trying to do research and ask as many questions as we could on like, right, what, you know, obviously we've been to these sorts of shows as spectators in the past. Um, and, and so we, we sort of know what that looks like, uh, right? I've, I've done trade shows, uh, you know, as a recruiter in a more, more, you know, professional sense in another industry. I know what it's like to go and set up a booth and do all that sort of stuff, but showing a, showing a video game is a bit of a different thing. And so, right, we were trying to do our homework and ask around with some of our, you know, uh, co uh, colleague studios and stuff like that of like, hey, right, what is it to show at something like this? What do we need to have? What do we need to know? What mistakes did you make? What, right, what went well? What didn't go well? And so we tried to come prepared, but you can't ever prepare for everything. And so, yeah, yeah. a few times it's like, uh what do we do well we do the best we can and we figure it out right like and you just yep. right it, show up early uh, get get to know people get to know who the decision makers are get to know how to make you know how to get things done i remember scott going rooting through the uh, uh cardboard compactors looking for a box that we could stand our equipment on so that the extension cords could reach properly to where all of our hardware was under the display um, yep. So that we're not just putting the laptops on the floor, right? Like we needed yep. some sort of box and it's like, well, where do we get a box from? Well, yep. it's a huge conference center. They've got a big like cardboard recycling bin area in the back of the, of the basically, you know, conference center warehouse, uh, right? Whatever. So, okay, let's go get some boxes. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's like the old Western movies where, you know, you see that lovely facade and everybody's booth is like that. You don't realize until you get there and you've done this, that everybody's booth, you know, is, is just it's lipstick on a pig, <laughs> you know, the back end of it is just, is just a bit of a train wreck. Um, we did a, so we did a lot of preparation for it. Um, we had the team go through and, and chop the demo down into something that was a bit more bite-sized for getting people through, because of course you don't want somebody playing a demo for a half an hour. That's, that, that's a problem. Um, so that was cut down. We had a couple of laptops you know, a relatively small uh, booth space. Uh, Pax took care of the key art on the back, the backdrop, uh, which was just gorgeous. It, that that came out really nicely. Uh, so we had a couple of laptops, um, some monitors, keyboards, mouse, that kind of thing, uh, where we, we had to bring a lot of the stuff ourselves. We rented the monitors um, and we had a TV that was provided, but we had to have our trailer ready to go. We had the game build ready to go. We had some cards to hand out. We had business cards. We had T-shirts. Uh, you know, some masks and things like that. Um, 
And a lot of things that, uh, it, it, what's what's interesting about talking about some of this stuff from the dev side is just things you don't think about, right? So yeah. uh, Lysol wipes to wipe down the, the mice uh, and headsets and things like that. Halls, the halls, oh my God. The <laughs> amount of talking you're doing, you know, over over a few days, when when you've talked to people, to more people in like three days or four days than you have in the previous two years combined, your voice yeah. is going to be sore, right? Yeah. So if you're going to a convention like this, take some damn halls. Um, you know, little things like that that you don't think about um, that came in really, really handy. Yeah. Um, wh was there anything that that you think we didn't prepare well enough for for the show? Uh, I think it's hard to say, right? I think I think one of the other things we did really well was we brought enough people and we did it in shifts. Right, like we were, we were lucky enough that we, there was four of us there, and, and it's not, it's not, it's not luck. It was an intentional choice, right? We split the day into two shifts. Two of us would do the morning, two of us would do the afternoon, and that let us really engage with every person that came up to the booth, uh, right? Keep the flow of people going, um, and not just, just not exhaust ourselves being on the show floor, show right, being on stage, so to speak for eight, nine hours a day, talking to hundreds of people, that would be really tough. So splitting it in half and doing, you know, a four or five hour shift was I think just enough to not, you know, run yourself into the ground. I felt bad for some of the other booths where you could tell that those people had been there all day. Like at the end of the day, you know, some of the devs beside us and stuff like that, some of our, our, our booth mates in the area, it was the same yep. couple of people or single person for eight, nine hours at a time. That would just be like super rough. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the guy, the guy on the other side of us, uh, and I, I can't, I can't for the life of me remember the name of the game, but it was, it was a, uh, you know, a clever mechanic where you're folding paper to solve a puzzle, right? Yeah, I'm sure you could Google that and find paper it. Paper trail, paper, paper trail. trail. Think, like it, it, but it was, it was the one guy by himself yeah, yeah. running the whole booth the whole time. And I no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, but of course that also blends into a, a, an, another sort of, Another question that, that is a follow up is there were four of us there, and obviously we got you we got an amazing amount of value of being able to talk with each other and and get that experience of seeing people in person, but that also means that it's a lot more expensive to go. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, and you know, to some extent, what we're trying to do when we're talking about all of this, uh, you know, the, these sort of devlogs is to give a little bit of insight into how do we do this and and you know what what do you have to do in order to make this kind of stuff happen? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the sure. cost? Sure. So we, it cost us about $15,000 Canadian to go. So call that, you know, 12, 10, 12 grand us, something like that. And that's, uh, you know, hotel rooms for four people, right? We didn't, we didn't hot bunk or right. All crash in one room or anything like that. Right. Everybody had their own room. Uh, right, we're in a fairly nice hotel, but a good distance away from where the conference center was because all the hotels downtown were super expensive. Um, but a nice enough hotel, certainly, right? 10, 15 minute Uber ride in the morning and, and in the evening after the show and that sort of thing. And um, all right, flights, obviously, uh, right? A uh, couple, or Nick at least, was fairly close to Boston, uh, right? Coming from Montreal. Uh, but a few of us were further away, right? You and I being in Edmonton and then Scott coming from Vancouver. Um, so flights and hotels and meals and things like that being the predominant cost there. Uh, you know, like I say, we were lucky enough that PAX picked up the, the tab for our, the booth itself. Uh, we had a couple of rentals and things like that for the monitors and the TV and, and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, right. And being the first show we went to, we had to buy the laptops and the headphones and the keyboards and the mice and just all the, the sort of, you know, hardware that we were showing with. That's a one-time expense, right? Obviously, we can reuse that stuff at future shows. Um, but right, putting it, the cost somewhere in that fifteen thousand dollar range—that's a lot. Um, you know, it's, it, I, I kind of try and look at this from a couple of different perspectives. In that, there's did this have value to us as a studio, as individuals, as a team? Is it a, you know, is it a, a worthwhile event, even just in terms of team building? I think we got a ton out of it that way. Um, 
you know, obviously building some relationships with publishers and other developers and packs and right. That team was great. Uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. did a great job taking care of us and all that sort of stuff. So there's, there's value from that side, but then there's the purely business return on investment side, right? What did we get out of going in terms of business opportunity and that sort of stuff? That's a little bit harder to gauge sometimes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so we we had uh, I I didn't get a, a really solid estimate of of how many of the people played the game. We didn't really count that, so to speak. Um, but I'm sure I'm sure we gave out somewhere between I don't know eight or nine hundred cards uh, yeah, over the time yeah. that we were there. Some people played, some people didn't. Um, and of course, that's that's partly us giving them that pitch of yeah, you can stand in line and wait. It might be ten minutes, fifteen minutes, or whatever to play. But you can go get the demo on Steam. It's ready to go. You know, play on yeah. your flight home when when you're a little bit more relaxed. You're not in a rush because uh, yeah. not not everybody has has the show floor pass for all the uh, you know all four days. Yeah. Um. And and whatnot. Um. So from from the team building side for sure, and I I I got to be a part of that, which was really nice. Um. And and meeting everybody and whatnot. Um. From a from an exposure standpoint. Um. It is true that all of these cons, um, from a from a small developer standpoint, it's a little bit like like playing roulette, right? You know, you're yeah. you, you you can't get that big payout if you don't play. Um, yeah. But a lot of the time, you're not going to necessarily get what it is that you were hoping for, right? You have yeah, to you, yeah. you so... have to get those media interviews. You have to get those those stories. Uh, and we did have we did have one very interesting one, which was that that Tycho came by and played. Or yeah, I came by it yeah. to to see the booth and and was interested in it, um, which is you know really really good. So yeah yeah right like you you'd asked a little bit earlier, what maybe didn't we do a good enough job of, um, and that's that's that sort of that lottery play of like you know I think we did everything we could, but I don't know that we got the results that we expected, and I I, I don't know that that's our fault. The game certainly showed very well. We did a lot of preparation to make sure that, like you say, we had a, you know, a really tight build that was, you know, playable in a reasonable amount of time on the show floor. We did a lot of updates to the demo. We've taken a lot of feedback that we've gotten over the last few months and really put some time into polishing up that demo and, and making sure we were putting our best foot forward because we knew we would have hundreds more people than normal going to our Steam page and playing our demo. And so making sure we had the, you know, the most recent graphical assets updated, that the demo was our, our newest build and all that sort of stuff uh, in preparation for the show. Uh, PAX also sends out a copy of their press list, which is all the media that they've invited to the event with their contact information. So that was great that we could hit them up before the show and just send them, right, here's a key to the demo. Here's where our booth is going to be, right? Here's here, right, here's the pitch on the game if this is something that you're interested in. Come by and see us, play the demo. We're happy to, right, book an interview or, right, have, book some time with you while we're at the show. We got some uptake on that, right? Uh, game Banshee interviewed us and a few other folks uh, that we spent some time with before. Uh, Mortismal Gaming covered us going into PAX uh, with a, with an update on our demo, which was big for us. Um, we did get about, oh, I guess about a thousand, maybe 1500 wish lists that I can say are pretty PAX related, right? There was a Steam event um, uh, featuring everybody that was at, at PAX. Uh, there was, um, uh, right, uh, we had sent out that press list. Uh, released before the show and obviously then people coming by and trying the game and taking the cards and checking us out on steam after mm -hmm. the day or whatever right so add that all up and you know we got maybe 1500 wish lists out of it which is great yep. um but i'll say that you know i mean right if we had spent the say fifteen thousand dollars on facebook ads instead of on going to pax um we probably would have gotten more wish lists than that but mm -hmm wouldn't have had the chance to meet the publishers, which, right, you don't know if that turns into a publishing deal or not, wouldn't have made as many contacts with media. And obviously we get to keep the press list that they sent us. So we have all their contacts now forever. Yep. Um, so when we, when we run a beta, when we launch the game, we've got other opportunities to reach out to those folks that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Yep. Right, there was one, one thing that you brought up that, that uh, reminded me of, of some disappointment that we had. Um, and I think that's valuable information for other developers to be aware of is this. So at, at, at PAX East, you know, they always have some kind of a Steam event. 
Now, for whatever reason, uh, you know, Square Enix was sponsoring PAX and they've got all the lanyards and this, this you know, three-story high digital Chocobo in the, in the Westin and all that kind of stuff. They also took out the front page of Steam for a publisher event at the same time. And so what ended up happening was the usual PAX event that would take place on the Steam front page didn't happen this year. It ended up getting kind of buried. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember we, you know, when we, we kind of realized what was going on there, that we were, there, there was a bit of disappointment. So something for people to be aware of is that those, those events, right. Unless it's a scheduled event that, that steam is saying, this is happening on the front page these, these days, you may want to just be aware that, that it may not be as guaranteed as you hope it would be. We've, that, that's a good point. We've had some really tough luck the last few months with online festivals. Um, right, Steam festivals, ones that get front page featuring are huge in terms of providing additional visibility for the product, right? So how many people on the average day are logging into Steam and see that front page and if they see a big sale event, will click on that banner and then go to the, right, the, the sale event page where they can see, you know, our capsule, wishlist us, try the demo, download the demo, see the stream, all that stuff is it's huge when you can get that visibility. And, and we've noticed a couple of things is we, we've just had really tough luck. Um, we haven't gotten into as many festivals as we did last year, but also it seems to me like Valve is really changing their approach to which events they're featuring on the front page. Um, right, last year we were in the Gamescom event online and we were in the Steam event. I remember we talked about that during our, our Gamescom video. Because uh, we had a little bit of trouble with, with getting into the Steam event there too. Um, but it seems to me like there's less front page featuring this year or that because right last year in the indie game scene, it was always a really big thing of like, right, what Steam festivals are going on this week, this month, next month, so that you can get your applications in, so that you can be included in the events, so that you mm -hmm. can get on the front page, so that you can get that visibility. And it seems to me like the game has changed there a little bit where... There's, there's the same number of festivals, but Valve is being more restrictive about which ones get featuring. And it seems to be more aligned with the daily, week, weekly, or weekend deals than it is about the actual festival. So, so the, the Blood and Dice Tabletop Festival was occurring. Uh, so GDC, the Square Enix Publisher Sale, PAX East, the Blood and Dice Tabletop Festival and the mix were all happening at the same time. Within about you know a 10-day range of each yep. other, there was some overlap, but within that 10-day stretch, all those events were happening at the same time. And so, right, if you're Valve, you kind of have to choose which events are going to hit the front page. So, right, GDC is more of a developer-focused event and isn't really customer-focused, so they didn't get any front page featuring. Uh, PAX is right mixture of video games and tabletop games and, and stuff like that. It's an in-person event. There was a Steam event, but there wasn't a lot of heavy discounting going on. So PAX didn't get featured on the front page of Steam. Square Enix had a publisher event. They had some deep discounts on some of their products. And so they got on the front page of Steam there, Square Enix. Um, Blood and Dice Tabletop Festival caught me by surprise. And they ended up on the front page because... Uh, we, and we have, we were in the tabletop festival last year. Um, and I think it had some front page featuring, but it also had some released games that were discounting and they, they were actually in not as a festival, but as a, basically a bundled weekend deal where all of these games had gotten together to do a weekend deal together and deeply discount their games together. And there were just some other games in that event that were featured that weren't released yet. Really tough luck for us. They had asked us to participate in it but they'd sent the email to an email that didn't exist on our mail server. So I'm surprised they didn't get a rejection or if they got one, they didn't follow up. So we never even got the email that they had sent us asking to participate. So when I followed up because we were in last year and I said, hey guys, look, right, we'd be happy to participate. Is it too late to get in? They sent me a copy of the email that they'd sent us and said, we asked you months ago to participate. You never got back to us. Yep. And so I, you know, I was looking through my emails to try and figure out how on earth I had missed that email. And it just turns out it was sent to an email that doesn't exist. And so, right, super tough luck, right? Like what, I can't do anything about that. Yep. Like that's really out of yep. our control, but it did cost us probably a thousand wishlists. 
which is yep. tough. And we've we, we have since fixed that particular issue. Um, but it, it is it is worth mentioning if anybody is going to send us emails, right? We have a contact form on the website. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but info at crimsonherring.com um yeah. is is the right one to send things to. Um, but of course there's other ways, you know, Twitter, all the rest of those. Um, that was that was a frustrating one. Um yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so so it just and so it has just seemed a little bit unfortunate that we things have aligned the way that they have. I mean, right, super grateful to PAX for the opportunity to show. It was a great experience. Everybody that played it and saw it had really positive feedback for us. It gave us an opportunity to really focus on what we were doing, right? Polishing up the demo, putting our best foot forward, refreshing the Steam page, recutting the trailers. Like, we, right, because we were going to PAX, I think our Steam page is better, our demo is better, okay, it didn't provide us as much upfront value at PAX at the time as we were hoping, but that doesn't mean it wasn't worthwhile. And, and right, obviously you get a lot of sort of post-conference follow-up that's still going on that it's difficult to measure the value of because we're just not done yet, right? Like I, you yep. know, I probably got in contact with half a dozen publishers that now want to have conversations about potentially partnering with us to bring Sovereign Syndicate to market nothing firm there yet but you don't know until you have the conversations and that stuff takes time yep. uh you know certainly showing well at the event helped us you know open some doors there where publishers came and saw us that because we were there because we were showing well because the booth was busy because the game played well right we had publishers that would just go play our game for 15 20 minutes and then come talk to us yep. and so right we don't know yet what that's going to mean for us but again you don't you don't know if you don't play it right Absolutely. And, you know, the, 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 the truth of any conference when you're showing um, is that the real value of the show always comes in the follow-up, right? That's, that is how that tends to work. These ones are maybe a little bit different if you get the Steam event and all that kind of stuff. But the event has nothing to do with your showing at the, at the trade show, right? It's, it's, you happen to be in the event. If you didn't show at the trade show, your game's still on Steam. <laughs> it's still yeah. on the Steam front page, right? Yeah. Um, so I think, I think the last question that I would have for, for this one is given all of that, right. That we have, we have some, some fantastic value. It was a bit expensive, but some of those things are sunk costs next time's cheaper, that kind of thing. Um, what do you think is the future for us for showing again, right? Things like PAX prime yeah. or rather PAX West in Seattle or Gamescom or, I've heard everything from from TwitchCon to you know, I mean, hell, you could you could go to Tokyo if you really wanted to. Yeah, uh, but yeah. that's maybe a yeah, different are, market. I don't know. Lots of shows out there. Um, that's an interesting question. I think obviously no E three. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, but, yeah, know. yeah. Unfortunately, right. Um, <laughs> uh, I think the jury's still out on that. Um, I think. For, for, for other developers that may be watching from a pure return on investment at the time perspective, hard to measure because of all the post-conference activity and the potential of publishers and stuff. It depends on what you're looking for. It would certainly be easier, less expensive and more valuable to go if we were going with a publisher um, as part of the stable of games that they were showing um, right. Or if you had more than one game to show yourself, or even if you had a game for sale where you could turn that interest at the show into, you know, a $10 transaction rather than potential wish list that you, you, is more difficult to measure the value of. Right. I, I certainly wouldn't say that we'll never go to a show again, but I'll say that we'll be more strategic about it. And at least I think we know more about what it is to show at a show and what what the costs are implicit and explicit. And we'll be able to make more educated decisions about when and where it makes sense to go in the future. But I don't know when our next show is gonna be. Mm -hmm. It's it's a funny thing about, about these shows uh, because it's, developers are so interested in having people play their game. We, we all want to, right? We all wanna have that experience. We all wanna get you know some of that feedback and all the rest of it. But the truth of, a trade show like this. Um, and that is honestly true in most markets when you're not talking about like those, those craft ones where people are, you know, selling fudge and things like that, uh, like the, the home market kind of things, but a genuine industry trade show, 
the attendees don't matter as much. And I don't want to say that, say that, you know, the gamers don't matter. Of course they do. Right. But where it comes to the amount of money that gets spent to go and, and the amount of work that it takes to do all of these things, right. It is about being at the show. It is about the media. It is about the relationships that you build while you're there, whether it's with other developers, other publishers, right. Again, the media, the folks that you, that you start to meet, that is where the value of these trade shows always comes from, right. Yeah. You know, 400 people, 500 people playing your game isn't generally speaking enough value to go. Yeah, um, right. We we so we got as many wish lists from the Mortismal Gaming video that came out before we were even at PAX, but because I reached out as part of going to PAX with hey, right, he's he's in the US, so I asked him, right, are you going to PAX? And if you are come and see us, and if you're not, hey, we have up, updated our demo if you want to check it out. We got as many wish lists from that video coming out as we did from going to the PAX show and being in the Steam event. Mm -hmm. So, so right. And, and, you know, getting an article in right on that press list were people from Kotaku, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, IGN, PC Gamer, uh, right. Getting an article from any of those media outlets would have been probably more wish lists than we got and more visibility than we got from the show entirely. Mm -hmm. um, so, right, that's what you're really angling for, right? Like we, we had some publishers and some very large publishers come and see us. And so obviously if us showing it at PAX results in getting a half million dollar US publishing deal with somebody, then that, right, that value just dwarfs what you actually get from showing it to you know 500 people at the show or however many people happen to play while they were there um, right as valuable as that is it's just orders of magnitude different yep absolutely well uh it was a good time i'm glad yeah. i'm glad that i got to be a part of it um and you know i know i i know that nick and scott we're gonna we're gonna have to get them on on camera here at some point um and and get some of their thoughts on on this because they're they're two very fascinating guys yeah um you yeah. know they got they, they got a lot to give for sure yeah we've been we've been meaning to do more specific dev journals too with like each discipline lead right so meet with nick what is it like to write for a game like this what did you learn what right like all that that those are going to be really valuable too i think yep i agree all right thank you everybody we yeah, will see you for the next one care.